we're not shareholders and investors uh, or random regional users of power. Our identity is tied to our place on the earth. And water is a big thing as Native Americans. The hydroelectric system benefited everyone. Everyone needs electricity. But it really had negative impact on the tribes and on their cultures and on their livelihoods. We're getting back some of what was taken away from us. Of the 565 uh, tribes around the country, there's only a handful of tribal utilities. I think it's so important for the tribes, whether they form a utility or they don't form a utility, to have the right and the opportunity to do it. We can do this. This is part of the one step to heal. It seems incredible that October of uh, 2001, this utility flipped its first switch. It was a significant moment, um, you know, when that when that actually happened. The cost of electricity were so key to the tribe's economic development function, which is really right at the heart of where Cow Creek was, uh, say, 15 years ago. I mean, tribes can form utilities and take themselves rapidly into a hole doing it. Um, we did a good cost comparison and determined that um, it, was a, it was a cost effective thing to do. As long as we can aggregate the capital and the knowledge. Because the tribe currently owned most of the facilities necessary, we only had to go out and buy a few facilities. We've since been able to take uh, our utility, which was formed around getting the BPA power, and expand its role to telecommunications and gas and water and sewer. It started back in 2003. This wastewater lagoon was the first part of the utility that was built. This tribe has ownership of about six or seven businesses. One, of course, obviously, is a casino. First casino established in Oregon. For the last 10 years, we have not had a rate increase. An RV resort a truck and travel center, a fairly significant broadband telecommunications company. That'll be the 5,000 square foot high density data center facility. The savings that we've realized in terms of power pricing has allowed this time the capability of moving the projects forward. And so it's been a very powerful organizational expansion for the tribe. I think it's just really the beginning. It's gone by so fast. It's surprising that this 10 years has uh, happened so quickly. You've had 80 years of electrical service here on the reservation, yet you've never enjoyed any of the benefits uh, of the employment or having the ability to have you know, lower rates or direct control. Now Yakima Power is here, which is going to benefit our children and their children. It's a, a change in our life. This is Yakima Nation. I grew up on this reservation, grew up in one of the very first housing projects this place ever had. Well, when I first heard about Yakima Power, I was a saw filer for the tribe at one of their two, one of their two sawmills. Um, I was kind of old, <laughs> for one. I believe I was 40, I think, or so when I started. Coming back as a, as a Native American lineman, there's not that many anywhere. And I watched the crews put up uh, power lines, uh, tear down poles, replace infrastructure. And I think that two years ago, I didn't even have this capability. We didn't have a crew, and now we have an all-Native crew able to go out and do the construction. 
business is a competition. A couple of other utilities that are on this reservation that are serving customers here. We've been told that we didn't know what we were doing. We were going to get people killed. I'm very thankful. I'm very proud to live on the reservation. And these fields out here, the field behind me is, is a drip irrigated asparagus. One of my utilities wanted 20 grand to hook up. And so Yakima Power hooked me up uh, at no charge. And, uh, and they've done a great job. We know that we're having a big impact on, on the valley floor down here, so um, the guys take it really seriously. They're a family and knowing that the electricity always has to stay on and they're always there and ready to make sure it stays on for our community. It's a great opportunity for the young people of our uh, nation to get involved in the electrical companies. All right, we got one softbound. Some of the guys who worked for Yakima Power when they were kids used to work on our sweet corn packing line. Now he's out there hooking up a fiber optic cable, you know? Actually, we're doing a, a repair on a, I think it'd be a 48 count. They're my neighbors. I understand that we're going to be provided online services to Yakima Power, and I'm anxious for that. I'm happy to see uh, competition to the utilities who are used to having no competition. We're ready for the, the growth and the challenges. And this, you know, new substation serves uh, 86 homes. Uh, so we are looking to uh, expand uh, to about 400 homes here in the next uh, 12 to 16 months. And, you know, that will be, you know, a 600, 800 percent increase from where we were at. And our goal is to get the 16 megawatts as fast as possible. Living in today's world, you know, everything is technology and moves so fast. Changes happen overnight. The people that came before us, our ancestors, took care of us in certain ways that we benefit today. They were fearless. I mean, they were, they were fearless, they did their jobs. It's um, a sign that time doesn't stand still, yeah. It's also gonna provide stability for our younger people, for the generations to come. And that's what sovereign uh, control's all about, the ability to serve yourself. There's not anything that we can't do. The tribe's a minority here. This was open to homesteading in 1910. We've been successful at running the Mission Valley Power since 1988. This is my tribe and this is where I'm from. Well, welcome to Mission Valley Power. It is a uh, agreement between the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Confederated Nations of the Kootenai Tribe on a 638 contract. I just hope it keeps going. The United States government, through the BIA, approves our budget, approves our rate changes. Make it work. Out of our 83 employees, we have about 66 that are tribal members. Jobs have been great for my family. The end of October will be my end of my 16th year. We have approximately um, 18,000 customers. Most of the people thought that the tribes couldn't run this. If you want to do it, just go do it. I mean, if you want something, go get it. It's yours. I've been told many times that our reliability has really improved over the years. That's my hope. It always stays under tribal control. Don't let anybody uh, throw your dreams away for you. And the tribe has taken our success and showed that when the tribe managed something, the difference it has made here. The tribes have done a really good job being full managers with the addition of their culture and their understanding of the history of these resources that dates way back. Every new generation of business people and tribal leaders in there has to relearn all of this anyway. I think that's part of what this project is about so that we can pass this down through time.
The biggest hurdle is making the decision to uh, say yes. This is right and it's okay. Look to the future and say this is what we want, whether it's serving the entire reservation or just a small piece. Whether it be reducing energy consumption through weatherization, developing their indigenous renewable resources. Or taking over somebody else's grid. And energy enables economic development. It also puts the tribe in the lead. Opening some of these doors has given the tribes a new way of stepping in and being part of all the negotiations that are um, related to the hydroelectric system. Think about it. It's raw and physical, tied to the rivers. So visceral and so important because of the fish and the wildlife issues and all that, but also enduring. The tribe's going to be here how long? Forever. <laughs>